Do you enjoy paying taxes? I mean, who does, right? We scrimp on ourselves. Meanwhile, you know, we continue to see billions of our taxpayer dollars being spent on everyone else but the American people. It's quite a change in pace, huh? New York City residents are kind of pissed due to a recent report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that shows firms and businesses leaving the city in droves as critics point to failed public policy, which includes high taxes and wasteful spending. Do you guys think that New York City has a problem when it comes to leadership? And if they're spending on waste, like what can they stop spending on that will hopefully convince people and businesses not to leave the city. It's going to take a really good plan to change the minds of residents. Now, speaking of plans, President Joe Biden doesn't have the best plans when it comes to many different aspects of our lives. And you can include the push to have even more people use EVs as a part of that list, as even car makers are giving him a big fat no to his initiative to try and get more people on board with their electric vehicles. And if we're talking about numbers from last year, only 5.8% of new cars and less than 2% of trucks sold were all electric meaning that more Americans are still hung up on the power that can be derived from gas and diesel. Major announcement today affecting the future of the auto industry. The Biden administration is proposing strict new pollution rules that could dramatically ramp up the transition to electric vehicles. The big question, are the car companies and the car buyers really ready for this? The Biden administration is looking to ramp up production of electric vehicles. The EPA today is expected to propose strict new limits on car pollution. The goal of the new rules is to ensure that 54% of new cars sold in the U.S. by 2030 are electric. The auto industry has already pledged to make electric vehicles 50% of new car sales by that same year. But they have a long way to go. Less than 6% of vehicles sold last year in the U.S. were electric. And experts say in the end, this is just a proposal by the Biden administration, not necessarily a requirement. I don't want an electric car anytime soon, personally. This does not look good for the Environmental Protection Agency's proposed rule to have two thirds of new passenger cars and 25% of new heavy duty trucks sold in the country to be 100% electric by 2032. And it also doesn't help that the Alliance of Automotive Innovation, a group that represents 42 car companies and account for around 97% of new vehicles sold in the country, they're saying that the goals for the president cannot be met unless all right, so there's a way forward, huh? The goals cannot be met unless they substantially increase the cost of vehicles. Oh, well, that's not a good solution, is it? Would you be willing to pay thousands of dollars more in order to follow a plan from the Biden administration? Now, I'm guessing that not many will say yes, given that recent reports show that 37% of workers have taken a loan, early withdrawal, and even hardship withdrawal from their 401k or similar plan. I mean, this is this is a really, this is a gigantic problem that we're seeing as workers are dipping into these retirement accounts and they're just withdrawing the money. We've seen this. The most recent study was Transamerica that, that we're looking at this week that found that, you know, uh, a large percentage of workers have dipped into them, mostly younger workers more than older workers. But we've seen this same, uh, uh, same trend through Vanguard's recent report. Bank of America has shown this. This is definitely a trend that's happening and people are dipping into these accounts and they're withdrawing the money and, and they're paying, they're willing to pay the tax on that money as well as a possible uh, penalty. But, but what has happened is what we're seeing is this report from Transamerica really is showing that people need the money now. They are saying that they're having trouble making ends meet, that they simply don't have the income to continue to save for retirement. But I've got to tell you that this kind of drainage on retirement accounts is going to be something that people really feel in retirement. And and it's, it's um, concerning. I mean, there's just pervasive pessimism out there when Transamerica looked at the workers in general. Now, this is never good news, folks. Just in the start of 2023, hardship withdrawals went up by 33% compared to the same period last year with an average of $5,100 withdrawn by each worker. What are people spending money on these days, huh? Well, according to the Transamerica Center of Retirement Studies, emergencies and debt both led the way as the culprits with everyday expenses coming in third. Now, just take that in for a second. You and I have been you know, talking long enough to realize that these three have always been the main aspects for financial financial troubles. And, you know, I've talked time and time again, you know, you need to focus and get rid of debt, get out of debt, because these are the weights on your ankles. And while those who borrowed against their retirement savings or 401ks, maybe IRAs, they won't see a short term issue. It's the long term problems you're going to get into. And believe me when I say that there is a way out. But, you know, we'll talk about that more toward the end of the video. By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. There's a link in the description down below this video. Now, since we're already talking about problems, Walmart has surprisingly shown us 
just how fragile retailers are right now with closures happening left and right with different branches reporting that they're underperforming. Now, just to give you guys an idea, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they have reported that food prices are 6.7% higher today compared to last year, which means that there are probably less people buying in the stores like Walmart. Now, the sad part is that communities, they're going to be directly affected by these closures. I mean, look at this, guys. Three locations in Chicago, one in Lincolnwood, two in Homewood and Plainfield. Stores in Arkansas, Florida, Hawaii, Indiana, Minnesota, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington, and Wisconsin. One in Washington, D.C., and one neighborhood in Overland Park, Kansas. Are any of you guys residing in these areas? If so, were you warned beforehand about these closures? And how true is it that theft played a role in these stores supposedly underperforming? And while these closures have become the last resort for retailers, some companies are now looking at more creative ways to save money. So take Dunkin' Donuts, for example, right? They're discussing offering free drinks on our birthdays instead of giving us, you know, triple loyalty points for our purchases. Sephora now requires a $25 minimum purchase for online customers who want to claim a free gift and 250 loyalty points during their birth month. And Red Robin, they now added a dine-in only in a $4.99 minimum purchase for customers to get their free birthday burger. Well then, none of these sound free at all, huh? So I guess loyalty to these products and stores won't get us as far as they used to. Now, it might make them more money in the short period, but if you ask me, these kind of decisions, they might backfire on corporations given that some customers have pretty much been with them for the long haul. But for others, it might feel like complete betrayal from an old friend. But let's talk about making money, all right? I'm going to be saying this a lot for the next few months, and I hope that more of you guys will listen. So we're going to see an amazing transfer of wealth soon. Wealth that even you and I can obtain so long as we know what we're doing. Are you guys aware of this? That the world's riches have added around $14 million to their wealth over the past six months? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say that they were adding this much to their wealth per day. Every single day, they added $14 million to their wealth. So you might be asking, how is this happening when we're all you know, talking about a recession and economic downturn? Well, it's because people are taking full advantage of the system. And while we can argue and complain about it all day long, we have to realize something, that there lies an opportunity under all this rubble. I mean, just look at this. A number of Manhattan homebuyers are now paying cash and it just hit a record high. Now, this is pretty smart given that they're avoiding fixed interest rates coming in at almost 7%. And given that interest rates have soared on mortgages, I can understand that. Now, I'm not telling you to buy specifically in Manhattan or to pay cash for homes necessarily, but maybe in a place where you actually like. Every downturn creates wealth for those who are willing to invest not only in the assets, but also to invest in themselves. And I get that a lot of us have to work for someone else to get started, but it doesn't have to be the case forever. And if you want to learn more about wise investments in the stock market or even real estate, or maybe how you too could potentially generate multiple streams of income through side hustles, starting home-based businesses or small businesses, if you're interested in this, definitely drop some comments down below and let me hear from you. Financial freedom is not a dream, it's a goal. And for you guys, it's probably the next phase of your lives. If you made it this far on this video, definitely drop a quick like for the video. Also consider subscribing and I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Y'all be safe.